Okay. Um, the camera, now this is all in one long camera move, uncut. And the camera will go way up in the air and then come way back down. And um, you see it starts on the face of a Native American with traditional facial tattoos, but no gaudy paint or anything like that. Very simple, very traditional. And the camera starts a long pull back and up, back and up. And you pull back and you reveal that he's got red tail hawk feathers or eagle feathers or whatever. Pull back up farther and farther, you see he's in traditional buckskins. Um, and in uh, what's called the sun prayer pose with palms up. And, um, my, my Indian friends I never can figure out why you guys pray like this down and all sort of crunched in when this is really the way you should be saying thank you, you know. Um, and anyway, so pulling back, and you see he's in a sun prayer pose with his arms outstretched and palms up. Pulling back farther and farther, up, 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 and you see he's on a pinnacle. Um, and then you're pulling farther back and up, and you see below that pinnacle, hundreds of feet, a beautiful valley with flowered meadows and forests and creeks and trees. And, Pulling back farther, farther, up and up and up, you see that surrounding that meadows and forest really is a valley um, and with uh, uh, the peaks of mountains on the side and some waterfalls and some snow, low afternoon light, until finally you reach a point where you're way up and you still, the Indian is still looking straight into the lens with his hands up like that, and at that point, he morphs into a golden eagle. Oh. And, and, the, and the golden eagle starts rising toward the camera with powerful wing strokes rising, 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 and then his wing goes across the camera, leaving only a feather. Now, you start following the feather down, 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 till you get way down to ground level, and all of a sudden, a child's hand reaches up and grabs it. And you continue down until you reveal it's a little girl running back to her family, mom and father who are picnicking, and, and maybe brothers and sisters, showing her, showing, wanting to show them the evil's gift. Um, and then at which point, do you believe in magic? Come be part of something wonderful. California. So you can see why I'm kind of excited about the form because anything that this you know little brain can come up, come up with, um, I can do. Um, and the thing that's astonishing, obviously, usually bureaucracies. First of all, they won't give you any money, and second of all, they'll take a year and a half to do it. Um, so I started kind of utilizing some of my contacts in the film business. And the first thing that happened was uh, I went to Earl Letts, who's one of the top three people at Paramount. And he said, I'm not going to sign a check for you. I won't give you a penny. But what I will do is give you all the facilities, all the equipment, and all the personnel you need. And now I'm including him. The dolphin thing, and we want to shoot organically uh, with a wave and do a morph if we can. If we can't, we're going to end up doing it with a big blue screen uh, room on what's called a gimbal. Um, and I don't know, we may even do both and see which one looks better. Because sometimes the, 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 the artificial stuff just looks artificial. The problem is with, with, when you're working with real waves, um, the, the, even if the, the surface of the water is a little different, if I've got a piece of a dolphin body surfing a wave that I want to match, it's very difficult to exactly match that wave. So there's a little luck involved. But um, uh, Paramount uh, gave us uh, facilities, 35 millimeter cameras, trucks, whatever we want. Um, USC Film Lab opened their doors to us. And I went on a tour of it and they said, whatever you want. And they've got a guy who worked for Lucas at ILM, uh, Industrial Light and Magic, uh, who's wonderful, who's going to be our, our, our munchkin in the uh, film labs there. Um, and Barry Sampson, who's a friend who directed me in a film I did called Ice Runner, um, has been cutting trailers for DreamWorks for the last year. And Barry's going to cut it, or help me cut it. Um, so in a way, because as they say, I'm riding for the brand, um, if, as an actor, I got up and asked for these things, I, I don't really know what kind of a response I would have gotten. Certainly not as generous um, as, as I think that I've gotten because I'm representing state parks. And my feeling, and the, the real motivation behind this, and this goes back to, to teaching and children, is that when kids are shooting each other in the schools, the way you get them to stop is not by saying, don't shoot each other in the schools, because 90% of kids are going to go, where's my gun? <laughs> you know? um, but you say, come be part of something wonderful. And you take them somewhere else. You give them another option. You create a positive bridge to another place. And, you know, nothing works all the time forever, really. Um, well, maybe a few things do. But the, the, the bottom line for me is, and, and really I think that if I, if I see a pattern in my life, a lot of it has to do with communication, which has to do with education, which has to do with, with young folks more than anything else. Um, and pretty much everything that I'm doing um, with my art in one form or another is, is connected to that or part of that movement. Um, I'll tell you one more PSA. 
just because that it's that's the urban part one. Um, and this is a long answer to what are you doing with Mr. Vio? Uh, the okay, you're in the gutter. Black and white, black and white, low angle shot in the gutter with some murky water flowing by and some trash thrown around. In the background, you see a vacant lot, burned out hulk of a car or whatever. And then all of a sudden, into frame, a Spanish boot in color. Everything else is still black and white. It's a Spanish boot with a big roll of Spanish spur in color. And you start opening up and panning up the leg, and it's in uh, traditional uh, vaquero shafts with a, you know, silver coins up the, the side. Um, and you pull back and you reveal a, a Latino, a traditional vaquero, a cowboy, a Mexican cowboy from the time of the rancho period in California, very adventurous and romantic period. Um, and um, he's in full color and with a sombrero and a beautiful handsome face and, you know, the little traje corto, the short jacket, a little bit of fluffy thing here type of thing, but nothing, again, too gaudy, but in full color and with his horse and with a, a silver um, uh, bridle and silver saddle. Everything else is still in black and white except he's in color. Um, and you see a look of concern on his face. And he starts walking. Now, as he's walking, leading his horse through this most poverty-stricken of areas, all in black and white. And when I say poverty, I mean not only physically, but emotionally, spiritually. Um, you see some winos and junkies over by a, uh, an oil campfire. They've got scrap wood, and there a couple of guys warming themselves, a couple of guys passed out. And as he walks by them, one of the guys, Aquinas, is up on his feet and watches him and reacts to him just like he'd react if he was in the middle of a, the barrio and he saw this vaquero walk by, you know, and he wakes one of the other guys up and, you know, and they, <laughs> and, they, and, and they start to follow him. And a couple of other guys get up and kind of stumble after him. Now he's walking along and there's some kids playing against the wall, you know, either flipping cards or coins or something like that. And they suddenly see this vaquero in full color in their neighborhood with his horse in full color, being followed by winos and junkies. <laughs> you know, and so they start. Forward. Now this group is growing, and this guy still he's walking down the middle of the boulevard, and there are a bunch of cholos on the corner, and they watch this thing. Procession coming up and passing by. Let's check it out. And they start following. Now, as this, it's like the Pied Piper. As this vaquero and his horse is moving through the neighborhood, he's just get all the people. He's just gathering them up, gathering them up. Windows start to open. People look down. Moms, fathers, aunts, uncles, grandfathers, grandmothers. People start joining this procession. Now, you, some of you may know that my mom and I started 25 years ago a community arts center in East LA called Plaza de la Raza. Now, most of you haven't been there, but what we started out reading on the grass next to a, a lake that was nothing but mud and, and occasional body parts. Um, now there stands these beautiful white buildings uh, with the Margot Albert Theater um, and two outdoor stages and a dance studio and classrooms and a 150-year-old boathouse that we have uh, exhibitions in of Siqueiros or also all the great Latino artists right on the lake which we cleaned up and repaired the fountains. Now, this has taken 25 years. But nonetheless, in its red, the red tile, sort of Spanish tile roof, big white walls, bougainvillea all over the place. And one of the cool things that I'm proudest of is that uh, we haven't had a paint job in eight years and we've never been tagged. <laughs> and in that area, you can't put your hand on a wall without touching four or five tags, you know. So anyway, this whole group is moving, moving, moving through. And still, they're all in black and white, he's in color. And if you're the camera, imagine um, a shot of then him sort of walking into a medium close-up and seeing something that's kind of past you, behind you, you don't see it, back there. And everybody behind him, and you see him, his face change with a beautiful smile, and you see all everybody behind him start to change. And they all start running, 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 and you start to hear music. And then it, the shot reverses, and what you see is the, and we have a little a mariachi, young mariachi group of 24 young kids in full traditional mariachi costume, coming out, playing their instruments, um, trumpets and guitars and the big guitarron kind of bass thing. And the uh, young girls coming out with a traditional doing the, the, there's a skirt dance that they do where they sort of move their skirt. It's a very beautiful, sort of very traditional thing. People coming out with food. People, basically a, a festivity of celebration, welcoming these people from the neighborhood in, into their, the sanctuary, right? So, and the camp now, as, as all these, uh, this, this bunch of, this motley crew is running 
to join this group coming out of Plaza. Now, the people coming out of Plaza are in color. 